So uh, in the interest of time, I'll just go right into it. Welcome to Spaces with Ears. Um, this is an ongoing project that examines the ambiguity between the speaker and the listener in the current age, with the goal to discuss the phenomenological, relational, and deeply political nature of modern day listening that reconceptualizes the studies of acoustic ecology. So I really want to thank the last two presenters for kind of setting this ground uh, to raise the politi political awareness of acoustic ecology of the modern day. Um, so why acoustic ecology beyond the body? Because my project is um, talking about an auditory context that's um, with beyond the body speed and capacity and it explores day-to-day -day experiences of listening to intelligent machines and it reviews transgressive turns beyond the boundaries of the body and most importantly, I want to raise the dichotomy uh, uh, between the ear and the body, which is a conceptual receptor versus the apparatus, and uh, kind of explore this realm of implosive listening versus explorative listening of the modern age. And finally, um, I do want to uh, also raise the question of listening as a political act beyond the senses of the individual body. So a brief trigger warning, this presentation contains some content about suicide. So if you feel uncomfortable about that, please feel free to either step out right now or during the presentation anytime. Uh, so we'll come back to this. Um, but um, first, um, ears to the noise. So instead of receiving sound in the speed of 343, our ears are now running at the clock of the fiber optics which is the speed of light, where the natural phonetics, acoustic and sound waves are turned into OMF digits. The ones and zeros are no longer perceived with a set of spectral temporal features of natural sounds that travel in air, nor the nuances in semantic deflections. Instead, a brain's auditory cortex is confronted with a mysterious lack of distancing. This is the age of deaf living for necessity, where ears are turned from pre-established recognizable patterns and turn toward the oceanic white noise of infinite data flows. Um, the soft flickering and murmuring Ryoji Keda's dataverse calls attention to the sub subtle hypnosis of noise that we've been living under. So this is the Cyrus One data center, and um, there's this one article, Why Everything is Getting Louder, that talks about the fact that a residence that a th um, you know, hundreds of miles away from the data center is hearing this hum, mysterious hum from the data center and they just couldn't figure out what it is. So uh, one of the residents talked about the fact that the noise gets louder in the night and enters our homes and the streets are filled with it. And um, so we can really see that the existential question around our sonic reality has shifted from the subliminal, uh, subliminal mind control capacity of directional broadcasted audio to the inevitable soundscape of machines electronic interference that we can't seem to separate ourselves from. So um, in his book, Sonic Agency, Brendan LaBelle talks about the fact that listening is a necessarily relational act that extends across bodies and things, persons and places. Sound is naturally an animate medium that transduces energy by passing vibrations from inside to outside the body, from one body to another. The study of acoustic ecology is able through this complex interrelationship that sound is able to manifest. However, we might see this uh, vision of listening being challenged um, since our ears are currently under the duress of, uh, you know, uh, this lack of solution to the incomprehensible external sonic environment. So we really see this strategy of turning inward. Um, active noise canceling headphones, binaural podcasts, meditative soundscape, and white noise smart app are some of the highly profitable uh, profitable technologies that stratify the amorphous sonic reality to a self-contained, customized sonic environment. How many of you, when you are traveling here to Florida, has used a noise-canceling headphone on the airplane or some other headphones or uh, noise-canceling machines? So I see a few hands here and there. 
So um, it's really getting extreme when we have this ability to control the soundscape further with uh, what is called the impulse response function and the HRTF earprint. Um, and if you have dived into spatial acoustic audio, you know that these are technology to literally uh, construct a realistic soundscape that tricks the brain. As sonic Houdinis, we've set traps that capture our ears in the magical picturesque that we think we have ways to get out of. So we see this strategy of using IRF to construct an outside space and using HRTF to construct an ear, a virtual ear. So um, this phenomenon is further complicated by the fact that we have um, these intelligent machines that have smart algorithms that controls our uh, soundscape. So this really creates a sort of phenomena, uh, which I call the ears toward the alias body. The Chinese live streaming scene has exploded in popularity, with the country's live streaming industry estimated to be worth over $4 billion in 2020. Users spend hours watching their favorite streamers perform various activities, from singing to dancing to eating and gaming. In a documentary inside the daily life of live streaming life, where every tiny fracture of the throat is captured in the mic, while thousands of people pay to listen closely to one person, the distance between the sound source and the microphone between the microphone to the listening ear is inconsiderable. So in discussing VR technology, Francis Dyson has pointed out that cyberspace challenges us to consider the ontology these few centimeters of distance represent. What happens when the sonic landscape of a live streamer and a listener is inside of or completely overlaps with each other? The listener scolds the live streamer for showing signs of exhaustion in her voice and the sound of the listening ear has preceded that of the speaker, and the speaker dis disappears in thin air. So one of the prominent issues that one encounters in digital signal processing is what, what is known as aliasing. And in fact, that causes different signals to, do, to be confused with or become aliases of one another when sampled, which results in a distortion or a loss of signal when a digital sample is reconstructed. In this case, we're witnessing a phenomenon of the new digital auditory age, the aliasing of a body. In reconstruction of a sonic reality, there is a confusion of the listener and the speaker causing a distor distortion in cognition. What happens is digi a digital black which vacuums the actual vibration of the body. The live streamer responds with silence. The listening act itself has reduced the body into an ear an ear that then listens to the murmuring of other ears and converts another resonating body to an ear towards the alias body. So, um, are everyone here familiar with the concept of feedback? <laughs> Shouldn't have asked. Um, so, um, further uh, with the phenomena of the alias body, we see this phenomena that's called ears as loudspeakers. Um, Surrounded, um, immersed in noise and captured by the all enveloping ears of our network surroundings, no vibration of vocal cords nor transmission into the auditory cortex has happened in the chain of alias bodies. Without new information, a decision has already made be before any information is sounded. So when a live streamer shared in her live streaming session that she wanted to drink pesticide because of her depression, she was responded with drink quicker, drink faster. She did accordingly, which made the video viral. So in its attempt to make an impossibly loud sound, the body or the ear only implodes in internal feedback in being an ear the same time as being a loudspeaker. The loudest sound that the body produces and hears is the sound of its self-destruction, capitalized into attracting more and more ears and bodies which turn into ears of an alias body. In algorithmic listening sampled at a scroll of a sump, the listening ears sound out what is given and the alias body obliges in the feedback loop of self-reinforcing narrative. So this is a lot of like maybe really heady and um, um, overwhelming stuff. And what is the strategy that one may craft toward these uh, phenomena that technology has turned us into? So first I wanna suggest a proposal of a sonic territorial morphology. Surrounded by ears turned cavities, Alron 
biological ears, ears to the alias body, ears at loudspeakers, we've only found ourselves plunging our ears further and further outward, exposed to the self-destructing force controlled by seemingly benign and nonchalant, uh, nonchalant noise. When collapsing inward stops being the solution, how do we reopen our ears and reestablish a relationship to the act of listening? Listening in the current age is a complex and political act. To the long-standing noise wave that we can no longer ignore, to a sensitive, intelligent, and self-referential listening space that we've so carefully curated and trapped ourselves in, what one needs is a functionally territorial strategy. Though it might be counterintuitive to close off in order to open up, to listen with a sense of locality, grounding, and relationship is essential for confronting the transgressive reality of sound, recreating an act of listening that honors our body's role as a mediator of sounds and repositions the ear as an apparatus rather than a mere receptor. Also, um, I want to raise this study, the ears, uh, eavesdropping exposed. Um, if we cannot stop hearing access, eavesdropping is our only condition. And this eavesdropper of the current age is a listener that has realized the agency of an ear as apparatus. In their project, Eavesdropping Exposed, the nonprofit organization Liquid Architecture explores the diverse modes of fu and functions of eavesdropping, which includes contemporary mechanism for listening in, but also activist practices of listening back that is concerned with malicious listening, but also the responsibility of the ear witness. The mystifying ears in the room could be one of the best assets we have in creating sonic territories. Furthermore, from what Brendan LaBelle describes as the listener to the space between a roaring world, one can envision the potential of what should be called a tactful eavesdropper, who hears with tact and tenderness the texture surface that are demanded in contact with the alerted and hypersensitive contemporary sound world. And tactful, uh, tactful eavesdropper is a true sonic rev uh, revolutionary that introduced new way of navigating the intricate and intelligent ears in the rooms, cooperating with a def redefining narrative of encounter with the ears to sense what is otherwise unimaginable. Finally, I want to end with this beautiful passage written by Jesse Cox. To win the game is to find their transmolecular uh, excuse me, transmolecularization technology to find a music maker. In his glamorous cyborg concert synopsis, the experimental composer Jesse Cox paints a beautiful picture of a, hyp uh, a, hypo a hypothetical cyborg race that migrates via DNA transmolecularization, vibrational surfing, and creates new patterns of meaning with noise. Instead of closing off into familiar sonic landscape in fear of the unimaginable, maybe the key to find the music maker in us. Um, in listening, musicking, and bodily engaging with noise, we might finally integrate with our developed machine auditory cortex. So um, that brings us to the conclusion that even though ears are shut off for self-protection, opening a game allows noise to crawl in and put us in constant struggle. However, it also sends us into an adventure to find a music maker, developing our bodily sonic territory and turning us into tactful eavesdropper who thrive in new complex and fast changing sonic environment as multi-dimensional listeners. To listen beyond is to listen without an answer. While current technology fo focuses on solving problems, finding answers and providing a clean and directional soundscape, the basic act of explorative listening seems more and more disengaged by the invention of artificial auditory contexts that sever rather than establish new connections. A critical acoustic ecology that is no longer passive and does not orient around the sonic normalcy we find ourselves in is necessary for the future. Such an acoustic ecology must root itself in uncertain discourses and visionary dreaming that strategize and navigates the ear in the room before they're planted. These are several references that I'm working from that I highly recommend checking out. So thank you.